look here. This is fire pink. One of the brightest spring wildflowers and one of the later ones. Um, late April, early May. This is May 7th. But it's a beautiful specimen. Here's a real good example of how a bloodroot leaf can vary a little bit. See this one has the two lobes here and a little bit of edging. Then you look at this guy. He has three. And it's more pronounced teeth there on the leaf. It's another one. But they're clearly the same thing. You can see they always have this kind of looks like a pair of lungs with at least two lobes there, but they can vary a little bit. That one's getting ready to bloom. Very nice cut leaf tooth wart. Rue anemone. mushrooms yet. American Columbo. This is twin leaf. You can see why it's called that obviously. It's got a bloom very similar to uh, bloodroot relatively large for a spring wildflower. Most spring flowers are pretty small in the bloom department. But uh, it's pretty common here in southern Indiana where I'm at. Here's a fine example of a trout lily or a dog tooth violet as it's known. Bloom always kind of droops down like this, and the leaves are a little bit mottled like that. Now, here, folks, is a pretty big Indian turnip. This is about as big as I see them in the wild. Wish I'd seen it last week because it's flowers about dried up. Jack's little pulpit's about dried up. You can see the height on that. That is quite a specimen. Rue anemone. See how the petals are a little Unevenly shaped and distinctive little leaves. This is Dutchman's breeches. This here is uh, Baneberry, just blooming. There's a Solomon seal right beside it. Anyway, Baneberry looks quite a bit like a, a black cohosh in leaf, anyway. Another one. That's squirrel corn. It's not as pointy on the top as the Looks like he took a little bite out of the bottom of it. <laughs> it does. But it's similar to the Dutchman's breeches, but just different enough. Wild geranium. 